Let's go. And you will say, oh. This is Yola Boy today. Just about three or four days ago, a story became known to me of a young lady who used to study in a university in Nigeria. But when the issues of constant ASU strike, staying more at home than being in school, started occurring, then the family thought that she should go abroad for schooling. And then another challenge arose even getting to pay the school fees using the official exchange rate became a herculean task. The Nigerian economy gone comatose. By the time the parents managed to pay the school fees to get the sustenance allowance to the young lady, almost impossible. And then she cried for help. She screamed out, what is it that is happening in this world? It's impossible so to say, for me to get my education running smoothly in Nigeria, and here I am, outside Nigeria, it's another challenge. Well, there will usually be cries for help. I can only pray that the Lord will hack into our cries when we cry for help. So that's why today, being Wednesday, um, no, sorry, today is Tuesday, being Tuesday, the fifth day of April 2022, on your live boy today, the topic and the issue and the prayer issue has to do with a cry for help. Let's go read what the scripture says. So we go to the book of prophet Jeremiah in chapter 14 and we'll be reading the entire chapter. So let's go quickly. The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah concerning the drought, Judah mourns and her gates languish. Her people lament on the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem goes up. Her nobles send their servants for water. They come to the cisterns, they find no water. They return with their vessels empty. They are ashamed and confounded and cover their heads because of the ground which is dismayed. Since there is no rain on the land, the farmers are ashamed. They cover their heads. Even the hind in the field forsakes her newborn cow because there is no grass. The wild asses stand on the bare heights. They pant for air like jackals. Their eyes fill, because there is no herbage. Though our iniquities testify against us, act, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee, O thou hope of Israel, its savior in time of troubles. Why shouldst thou be like a stranger in the land? like a wayfarer who turns aside to tarry for a night? Why should thou, like a man confused, like a mighty man who cannot save? Yet thou, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by thy name. Leave us not. Thus says the Lord concerning these people. They have loved to wander. Thus they have not restrained their feet. Therefore the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. The Lord said to me, Do not pray for the welfare of these people. Though they fast, I will not hear their cry. And though they offer burnt offerings and cereal offerings, I will not accept them. 
but I will consume them by the sword, by famine and by pestilence. Then I said, Ha, Lord God, behold, the prophet said to them, You shall not see the sword, nor shall you have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. And the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I did not send them, nor did I command them or speak to them. They are prophesying to you a lying vision, worthless divination, and the deceit of their own minds. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who prophesy in my name, although I did not send them, and who say sword and famine shall not come on this land, by the sword and famine those prophets shall be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem, victims of famine and sword with none to bury them, them, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, for I will pour out their wickedness upon them. You shall say to them this word, let my eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease, for the virgin daughter of my people is smitten with a great wound with a very grievous blow. If I go out into the field, behold those slain by the sword, and if I enter the city, behold the diseases of famine. For both prophet and priest ply their trade through the land and have no knowledge. Has thou utterly rejected Judah? Does thy soul loathe Zion? Why hast thou smitten us so that there is no healing for us? We looked for peace, but no good came. For a time of healing, but behold terror. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord and the iniquity of our fathers. For we have sinned against thee. Do not spawn us for thy name's sake. Do not dishonor thy glorious throne. Remember and do not break thy covenant with us. Are there any amongst the false gods of the nations that can bring rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Art thou not he, O Lord our God? We set our hope on thee, for thou doest all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading through what I just read through, he just tells me the same situation that happened in the land of Judah and in Israel when Jeremiah was there and was prophesying to the people, perhaps the only lone real prophet of God. That's about 2,000 700, 2,800 years ago is the same thing that is happening in Nigeria almost 3,000 years after. It's the same thing that is happening in virtually every part of the world almost 3,000 years after. And like it happened in the days of Jeremiah when there were very few real prophets of God and so many that were prophesying lies and God sitting on his throne said it then and he's still saying it now that if you listen to those false prophecies, then everybody will be doomed. Priest, prophet, pastor, and everybody in the land. We pray that that will not happen to us in Jesus' name. And as Jeremiah also cried for help at that time, then this is the time for the people of God to also cry for help concerning this nation called Nigeria and concerning other parts of the world where there is war, where there is famine, where there is banditry, where there is unnecessary killing, where there is the stealing of the common patrimony without any remorse. Of course, there are a few prophets that are speaking and that are speaking the word of God. I still heard what one of the great men of God in this country said a few days ago about the stealing of the oil resources of this nation telling you that there are still men of God that are still crying to the Lord for help for this country. But as they are crying to the Lord for help for this country, just like in the days of Jeremiah, they are also warning the leaders of this country the way Jeremiah warned the king of Judah. And perhaps other prophets who are also in, 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 in Israel also warning the king of Israel at that point in time. This is a time to cry for help for this country. And therefore, everyone that is called by the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity and must cry for help to the Lord so that our country will be saved. Well, 
That's a corporate thing that all of us must do. And you must also pray for your own family unit as well. The story that I just told you of that young lady that is far away from her fatherland now, sent out of this country of necessity because she wanted her education to be smooth. And now it is in fact difficult for her to be able to sustain her living. The debit cards and all kinds of credit cards that come from, from Nigeria now have a maximum limit of $20 to spend in a whole month for such people, and it is difficult to send money from home. We are crying for help. We need to cry for help. Join us in crying for help. Depart from iniquity yourself also, so that the Lord can hear your cry. So I'm therefore sending an invitation out to you, if you are not yet a Christian, so that you can also give your life to Christ, so that you can also be amongst those that are righteous, that will cry to God with effectual fervent prayers. Because we have been told in the epistle written by James that we should confess our faults one to another and pray for one another. That the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous ones avail much. So why don't you join the righteous ones today so that there can be many more people crying for help on behalf of this country, Nigeria. Do you want to give your life to Christ? Then say this prayer after me quickly. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. It is time to cry for help. I also want to be eligible to cry for help for this nation and for myself. Therefore, I say, Father, forgive me in the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive me of my sinful past. Rewrite my story from today. Let me from today also join the fold, the sheep that you shepherd. Let me be accounted for as one of the Christians that can cry for help for this nation and you will hear our prayers. Thank you, Father Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, welcome into the kingdom of God. And if you need to grow in that kingdom so that your prayers will become fervent, no matter how effect, I mean, will become effectual uh, as they are also fervent, then you need to find a Bible-believing church around you. And like I always say, once you get to a Bible-believing church, the Spirit will lead you. And like I also usually say, if you happen to find an Anglican church around you, check out the place. I am almost sure it should be a Bible-believing church. And then you can also grow amongst those that can cry for help and the Lord will answer your prayers. But most importantly, if you happen to be in Oshobo, Washington State, Nigeria, come to the Anglican Church or Okia State Extension, where yours sincerely is pastor, and together we can grow in the Lord, cry for help when it is necessary, and I trust that the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. As you go out today now, let's say this prayer together. Say, Dear Lord, please have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us as individuals, as members of this community, and members of the nation. Have mercy on the nation at large, we pray in Jesus' name. God bless you as you go out today. Amen. I judge you faithful. I call you faithful.